London for the day. I'm just driving in town for some meetings, but I realized I'm in the area of my friend Fergus, who has just come off an incredible adventure. So I thought I'd go and pick him up because he hasn't seen the GT3 yet. But also we're going to share this guy's story with you because it is quite incredible. So let's jump in the GT3, see what's what. So, guys, this is my friend Fergus. Um, he is adventurer, explorer, extraordinaire. I'm in the area today and Fergus has just got back off yet another crazy adventure. You ran through the Jordanian desert. That's right, yeah. Uh, <laughs> as, you, as you do. As you do. Uh, <laughs> that was a holiday. Jeez. Um. Oh, Whoa. And the going was really, really hard. Um, I'm glad there's not any more today, I'll tell you that. Yeah, they called the toughest foot race in the world for nothing. 250 so kilometers bad. through the uh, desert in Jordan, like, yeah, really hot, places like Mars, uh, nothing to see, yeah. no, no like, life, it's just so dry and barren. What? Uh, it was awesome. What makes you do these things? What I mean, because that's not the only adventure. We'll get on to you rowing the Atlantic shortly. But what is the sort of main motivating factor behind putting yourselves in such danger? Oh, I don't know. <laughs> I have never quite been able to put my finger on it, but yeah? I think just uh, the I don't know whether the just the mundanity of life. You know, when you sure. you know you've got Monday to Friday nine to five, which I do. Uh, you just if. I just find the need to offset that somehow, and I guess we all do. We all have yeah, our totally. outlets. And I guess, like for you, it's your cars. Yeah. Um, for some people, it'd be sports or something. But for me, mm. it tends to come down to this kind of extreme fitness element, which I seem to get a kick out of. And so, are you always planning the like next adventure? Yeah, um, I actually just did a, a, a little. Um, piece for an online sports blog right. and uh, one of the last questions for that was um, would you do it again and, uh, and just like my instant reply to that was I'd do it again in a heartbeat and as soon as it was done I was like come on I want to do more now what? And I, now got, what? Yeah. I got back to the desk on Monday morning yeah. like still completely knackered and tired but I was just googling like other endurance runs or endurance That's events so and looking good, for the man. next you know. That's so so good and so was the Atlantic row was that your first major expedition as it were yeah that, yeah. that definitely was the first um, that gave me a, a taste for that kind of extreme side I'd always loved fitness and yeah. um, the outdoors and surfing and, and uh, rowing and that kind of thing but okay. uh, the Atlantic row was the first of that extreme uh, sort of nature where I guess there was an element of life and death if something had gone well, yeah, wrong I mean, then you no could have been no pun intended but you were in at the deep end there weren't you I mean yeah. you, how come there was no transition from rowing the channel yeah you just went boom was, atlantic yeah, <laughs> like, yeah like that's say, crazy I, it's almost like it got shoved into the deep, into the yeah. deep end um yeah there was no particular kind of just grading into it and um it, it was the opportunity came up at the last minute someone dropped out of this four-man rowing team okay so they put together this campaign and it takes a long time to to row the to prepare to row the Atlantic. Yeah, it's like, it takes like a year to build up to it. You've got to fundraise, really? you've got to yeah. prepare, you've got to train. Yeah. You know, it's endless what you've got to do. Yeah. And uh, just a few months before the start, someone pulled out. So, right. So it was just kind of like plug and play for me. And I was like, I just left my job in the city. Okay, And cool. I was like, hey, this is such a great way to just get out of London, yeah. go and experience uh, the world and life and like try and reappraise and see what's going on. Right. Ultra like lifestyle contrast. But, so how long is that journey? Uh, the Atlantic. Yeah. Yes, it's 3,000 miles from the Canary Islands, uh, which is just uh, sort of near Morocco, over to Antigua in the Caribbean, 3,000 yeah. miles. And how much time do you have to spend on, on a boat? Um, on, a, on a rowing boat. And that was 48 that. days. 48 days. The row itself, yeah. And so, there's four of you. Yeah. In, in, in your living space, <laughs> is, you know, you, people could call this GT3, uh, like, you know, Tight. it's quite cosy inside, but our yeah. cabin was probably smaller than this. And there's For four, four of you. grown men in this cabin. Um, so you, for, so you spent 48 days on the Atlantic Ocean. Yeah inside something smaller than the interior of this GT3. Yeah. And 
how many of you were rowing at any given so time? Two at a time. So it's, it's right. always rowing 24-7 for the whole time, two of you. Um, and then two would be chilling out in the cabin or in the daytime you sit on the deck. But at night, yeah. you'd both be in this. And then if there was bad weather, all four of you would pile in. So we had 72 hours. In, we had 72 hours in a space like this. Uh, 72 which was hours. Uh, quite an experience um, that was not to be repeated. <laughs> But I tell you what, you get to know yourself and you get to know oh, your buddies. The mind games must be must be crazy. Yeah. I mean, you obviously very quickly lost sight of land. Take halfway through, right? Like 22 days in. Yeah. And you're thinking, I've got to do all that all over again. Only now I'm completely worn out. I'm pissed off with my roomie. Yeah. <laughs> We're all taking a shit next to each other. Yeah, in a how, bucket. In a bucket. Yeah. How... How do you, what's the mindset then? Like like halfway? Yeah, it, it's tough because you know, you've done 1500 miles, you're looking on the GPS screen in the cabin and you've, yeah. you've got another 1500 miles to go and there could be weather, it could be longer, and stuff's starting to break on the boat and you know, maybe you're starting to break a bit in the head. Yeah, I bet. So it's a long, long, a long way, although you're halfway, it's um, still a massive void between you and stepping onto the dry massive. hand. Massive. Um, and so this 72 hours that you spend, you were obviously in there because you, it was unsafe to be yeah, outside? Yeah, so it's really bad weather. Yeah. Right, okay. In that bad weather, do you ever get pushed back? So, yeah. all, so the last three days progress have just been literally yeah, that was, washed away. Yeah, that was so demoralizing. <sighs> and we were all being seasick in this cabin. We weren't eating or drinking. Um, and she, the only time you'd really go outside would, would be to throw up. And you would, <laughs> there was nothing to throw up, you know, it was like that. Um, Sounds uh, like a great holiday, man. Yeah. <laughs> Going back for three days, and you'd have to row back just where you come from for another three days. Uh, so yeah, that that was not nice. But it's, it's a, lot, a lot of mind games. And so you went from spending time on water to lately the complete opposite, spending yeah. time in the desert. Yeah. What Which was is, the why is such a contrast? Or yeah. was that why? Um, I don't know if how how much that was designed or, or not, but yeah, the ones obviously like you're. In, surrounded by water and there's so much water yeah. although the irony of that is you're actually dehydrated and thirsty most of the time so in the Atlantic um, our water machine broke so we had to hand pump all of our water by hand um, so you'd literally make a water bottle of water a day and then you'd just be sick of making this stuff yeah, I bet. Um, so although you've got plentiful water everywhere the irony is, is that you don't um, but yeah there, there was no like design between the desert and, and being in, in the ocean but yeah. Um, and actually, the way that an ultramarathon works, every 10 kilometers there is a checkpoint where you get given water. So there's actually okay, more right. water on the desert run than there was, was in on the, the ocean. Yeah, because you're completely self sufficient yeah, on the Atlantic Road. You've got everything you need on the boat. Wow. For, for, I mean, you've got to prepare for like three months on the boat, worst case. So you've got so much food, you've got uh, like snacks and chocolate. And, and there's no support emergency. boat. No. Uh, so there's no like main boat. Following you, or nah, completely on your own. On your own. So you, and you know, we were just four lads that the other three had never rowed before. We'd never really been on the sea. We hadn't been in the boat together until three days before we set off and did this three thousand mile thing. So this is like the most intense social yeah. experiment ever. Yeah. And I mean, uh, Big Brother, eat your heart out, man. Yeah. That they should have had live GoPros yeah. in there. Uh, all, yeah, I mean there was there's so intense. so much dynamics going on, and yeah. and funny enough, the two guys that were best buddies uh, going into it, like one one was the godfather to the other one's the kids, so they're really tight. Yeah. On the road, those were two that were just like they could not stand the size of each other. <laughs> After like a week or ten days, that soon, just like that soon, dude, well. like, you're such an idiot, and like they, oh, they really? like they have big arguments and stuff, yeah. <sighs> But now, like a couple of years on, it's water under the bridge, and you know, yeah, you know, like course. all these things, like yeah, yeah. you know, the, the friendships come. come of course, in they the do. End. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh man! And what is the biggest lessons that you've taken from this, or what have you learned about yourself that you, you probably, when you first embarked on these things, you didn't expect? Yeah. Um, definitely an element of self-reliance that yeah. like.
like when you're rowing the Atlantic, you've just got, if anything goes wrong, you've all you've got is your three mates and the kit you've got on the boat to fix stuff and make it right and just to get on with it. You can't, you can't get help, you can't get advice particularly, and you've just got to fix stuff and, and just get on with it and, 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 and get the job done. Yeah. So I definitely take strength from that and, and, um, and feed off that like in my day-to-day -day life now. Where you know, where sometimes you might have been like, "Oh, I can't do it," or whatever. I well, like, every I other bit that. of your life must feel really pedestrian now. It must be like super easy going. So that's yeah. just probably why there's this reason behind you, like searching for the next thing over and over again. Yeah, yeah. So probably just looking to renew that. Take the desert run, which you've just done. Yeah. Were you thinking about the next thing during that run, or were you just like, "Get me out of this heat box"? And then when you got home, you started thinking about it's it. It's so weird. You really don't, or I, I don't anyway, think about much when I'm running, despite, Interesting. you know, run, I'm running from, for those five days. Mm -hmm. This ultra marathon was over five days. Okay. And that would be anything from five hours a day to 10 hours a day. So it's a large chunk of the day. Yeah. Uh, and one would, it was like the road, one would think you'd come up like with the answer to life or, mm -hmm. you know, or, or some like When out in the desert and found from, yourself. But yeah, I mean, actually all I would do would be to count down from 30 to zero over and over again. So I'd like each step would go 30, 29, 28, 27. And so actually you're just kind of so in that moment and in that second yeah. that I, I was never particularly removing myself to think about other things, be it the next challenge or be it what I want from life or, you know, That's things on a different, different level. So tell me about the adventure magazine Avant that you now work for. It's obviously very appropriate considering your lifestyle. Yeah. What's it all about, man? Uh, it's, it's great. I've been at Avant for a couple of months now, so just bedding in, mm -hmm. and it's great. It, it suits me down to the ground. I always think it's, it's good when you can cross over your personal interests with you work. Too. Yeah, um, absolutely. I mean, the, the dream, of course, is to, to make work entirely what you like doing. So yeah. as far as to become a sponsored um, adventurer or like I guess you now doing a lot more with the cars sure um, but so I've at least managed to like build in the personal um, enjoyment of what I do into like business side so the magazine is based around adventure mm -hmm. and basically anything that is the, at the forefront of human endeavor and pushing the boundaries and doing some amazing stuff and Very the articles cool are just beautiful. The photography is just so yeah. tight and so good. Well, last time we met, I saw one. I got a, a copy. Yeah. And it is the sort of thing that would take pride of place on your like coffee table. It's yeah. beautiful. Yeah. And the people in it are incredible. The stories are amazing. And the yeah. photography is second to yeah. none. It's just stunning. Every page. Yeah. It's Fantastic. great, isn't it? We just yeah. won a couple of awards in New York uh, for Man, best, nice work, best independent uh, magazine cover and best independent like whole magazine. Top um, work. So awesome. it's, it's kind of being noticed a bit too. Brilliant, dude. Well, yeah, yeah. I mean, the idea of today really is um, I love sharing stories with yeah. these guys here. Um, and uh, I thought, I'm in town. Fergus has just come off an epic adventure. What a good, great story. Let's have a chat. Interesting guy. Let's. Have a chat, man. Dude, thanks for your time. Thank you so much. Pleasure as always. Thanks for watching. See you next time. Ciao.